Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2019. Brought to you by Dell Technologies and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE, Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. Hey Dave. Hey Lisa, good Day, to work with you. Good to work with you too. <laughs> Day two of theCUBE's coverage of Dell Technology World 2019 from Las Vegas. And as John Ferrier said yesterday when you guys did your open, this is a, a CUBE canon of content. We've got two sets, three days of coverage. Excited to welcome Deloitte back to the program, but a couple of new guys from Deloitte joining us. We have Bob Black. Dell Technologies Global Alliance Lead and Principal from Deloitte. Bob, it's great to have you on the program. Thank you for having us, both of you. And Luis Benvenides, VP of Cloud Business Development at Deloitte. Thanks so much for joining us, Thank Luis. You. Welcome. Thank you both. So guys, yesterday's keynote was fantastic. It really started with this electric, um, and I think that started with the fact that Michael Dell came out to Queen music, which I loved. Um, <laughs> But also today, Jeff Clark shot out of a cannon as well. One of the things that he talked about was the Dell Technologies five key imperatives for IT modernization. One of them being hybrid cloud strategy for multi-cloud journey. We've been talking about multi-cloud for a long time. It's a big theme here. We're going to get into that with you guys and specifically the rise of hybrid cloud. But before we get into that, Bob, let's start with you. Kind of set the stage about your tenure at Deloitte. You are an industry veteran. So tell us a little bit about your expertise and kind of some of your thoughts on some of the things you've heard the last two days. Sure, well thanks a lot for having us. Uh, so again, my name is Bob Black. I'm the Global Lead Alliance Partner for Dell Tech for Deloitte. Uh, I've been with the firm for about a little less than three years now. Um, I actually came to the firm because I really, the, the, my former employee um, really neglected to focus a lot on infrastructure and hybrid cloud, right? So when I saw this as an opportunity to come to Deloitte and, and and really fashion what that what that should look like in the marketplace, and so um, I, I think as, as as serving in this role, um, you know, we've been able to really drive a lot of what that hybrid cloud messaging throughout Deloitte and for a lot of our customers. And Luis, tell us a little bit about your background. Oh, thank you. I've uh, been with the firm now for about two years. I actually came in via an acquisition of a, a company called Day One Solutions, where we helped um, kind of provide a shot in the arm into our overall cloud go to market. But my experience is I, I've worked at cloud providers like AWS, I've worked with uh, the technology OEMs as well. So I've, I've seen, this, seen this space change for quite some time. So this is the second Dell Technologies world. Um, lots of news yesterday, this whole journey, a lot of collaboration yesterday as well between really kind of VMware as, as a linchpin of driving a lot of what Dell Technologies is doing. We saw Microsoft on stage, everything is about collaborating, listening to the customer, and enabling customers to be successful in this challenging, but very true multi-cloud world. Talk about some of the announcements, Bob, we'll start with you, some of the things that you're hearing, and what that, how Deloitte can help Dell Technologies customers with a successful hybrid cloud strategy. What are some right. of the trends you're seeing and hearing? Well, yeah, so thank you. So, I mean, it was, some of the announcements yesterday were very fascinating, and, uh, you know, one of the things that we have been seeing in the marketplace is a lot of our clients are restarting to repatriate their applications uh, back from public cloud, back to on-premises. And that's not to, you know, say anything bad about public cloud, but what, what we're seeing is a lot of our clients have thousands or if not tens of thousands of applications in a legacy portfolio that simply are not conducive for, for public cloud. And when there was a shift out to, to public cloud, I think that you know, a lot of our clients adopted this lift and shift or, or, or re-hosting type of methodology. Uh, and most of our clients really didn't find the value in there that they thought they were going to get, right? They weren't able to modernize the application, they weren't saving any money, they had dual IT, fractured operations. And so for, because of that reason, we're starting to see a lot of that repatriation back uh, on premises. And a lot of, I think a lot of our clients see that as somewhat of a failure but I think what we see it is as an opportunity, right? You know, public cloud is a great tool in the toolbox, and when it's incorporated with, as you heard here up on the stage yesterday, you know, the data center, uh, other other areas on premises, and the edge, right? You can really put together a cohesive hybrid cloud strategy, and that's what's really going to drive value for our clients. So we we you know we worked successfully with a number of clients on things like VMC and AWS, and yesterday's announcement on VMware and Microsoft, and now of course Dell Cloud. Uh, I think it's only going to accelerate uh, the adoption of those technologies and solutions to help our clients adopt a hybrid multi-cloud strategy. Yeah, I'll, I'll add to that. I, I think it's, um, it's kind of an evolution, really, of our industry. 
if you go, go back to the 10 years of history of the cube, look at how much has changed and, and software-defined OEMs, right, uh, abstracting the OS or application away from the hardware component, that's been happening for some time. And you're now starting to see the, you know, the other side of that from the public cloud moving to on-premises as well. So you know, really the uh, hybrid definition, if it's seamless data and applications across environments, we're just continuing to move to that model. And there's some ironies that I want to come back to, but I, I want to ask you, uh, Bob, when you said some of your clients feel like it was a failure, do you feel like it was an edict from up on high, go to the cloud, and they really didn't have a clear strategy to affect the operating model, and that's why they ended up where they are, or were there other factors? I think so. We, we, we kind of dub it as somewhat times of a, as a management by in-flight magazine, yeah. right, if you will, right? You know, this, you know, I remember talking to a client, and she told me that she had to move every, all her storage out to cloud, and when we asked her why, she said, well, that's what everybody else is doing. I assume I have to do the same thing, right? So, I, I look, you know, we're not here to disparage anything in the public cloud. It is a great, you know, tool for a lot of our clients. It's just making sure that we have that integration, that seamless integration of applications and data uh, between, you know, both on-premises and cloud. And that really starts with a really well thought out strategy. It actually starts out even before that with trying to understand your applications. Many of our clients, I mean, the application, and this is hard for me saying this as an infrastructure guy, right, but the application should drive the placement, right? And I think a lot of our clients struggle with what makes up their application portfolio, right? What are the attributes that, that make up the application that will help determine the placement of, 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 of those applications themselves? Well, that's why, Luis, I'm, I'm interested in how Deloitte looks at infrastructure, because Bob, you were saying your previous firm really wasn't all in right. on infrastructure, kind of infrastructure. But when you think about a firm like Deloitte, global capabilities, deep industry expertise, application you know, capabilities, infrastructure is more horizontal. How do you guys look at the, the opportunity? Why is infrastructure so important to you? Well, it's really to support next generation applications, right? Again, going back to, if you think of hybrid as an approach of, of seamless integration across environments, and, and you start developing these new applications towards you know, different operating models or service oriented models, the underlying infrastructure is not really built for that, so you're going you're to need to go through IT modernization, uh, refreshes with you know, new type of technologies and maybe what you were doing before, so that these applications as they move away from kind of legacy environments to more modernized type environments, cloud or on-premises, ultimately you're going to have to address that IT on-premise need. So what is that path for a customer who, like you were saying, Bob, who thought, wow, we've really failed at this. They, they went to public cloud because everybody else was. Suddenly, I mean, we all know time is a major issue that with any, every business transforming because for survival and for competitive advantage, how do you help a customer take that what they perceive as a failure? And, and a lot of times that can be a positive effort, right? Because there's a lot of opportunity Absolutely. that- Absolutely, learn a lot. Exactly. Give us an example of maybe a favorite customer by name or industry where you said, all right, we have, let's step back, we have to have a strategy here, evaluating all of those applications, letting them, as you said, Bob, drive where they should be run, how they should be deployed, how they should be secured. How do you kind of help that repatriation it, from a speed perspective so they can get to market faster and turn that failure, of, and a failure into a success? Yeah, I'll give you one example. I mean, we, we working with a, we're working with a, a retail client uh, not too long ago, uh, and you know they had they bought the you know they drank the Kool Aid and decided they wanted everything out to public cloud, right? But it, again, what they found was unless you're willing to refactor an application, right, to take advantage of cloud-based services and and, and, and and more agile nature of application development. Um, what they found was that it wasn't really providing the value that they, that, that they were hoping for, right? And so again, when, you, when you're left with that lift and shift or that re-hosting strategy, it, it just didn't really provide anything. So what we wanted to do is work with them to kind of put together a business case, a, a more well-defined strategy to say, hey, look, let's, let's, let's accept the fact that these applications are not conducive to the cloud, and, right, and how do we drive value across the entire application portfolio across both on-premises and uh, in the public cloud? Right, and then I think the other thing that we need to talk about too is, I think a lot of times, and it's been brought up here several times, is um, I think a lot of a lot of clients out there they talk about public cloud and the data center, um, but that's it, right? There, are, we, we're we're going to start to see distributed computing in the edge, right? We're going, I think a lot of clients forget that people need to get to the cloud. There, right? there's going to be this edge computing, right? So the journey starts there, but it certainly doesn't end there either. Yeah, it, it kind of comes to mind another uh, insurance client that we have, large insurance uh, company. Uh, and they're a major cloud adopter, but overall it represents still a small portion of their overall IT, but they need that speed to market. 
Um, so leveraging technologies like Pivotal to be able to, to quickly obtain that. And then, but as far as their overall application strategy, every net new generation app, they're going to try to, they're, they're a cloud first mandate as well. And we're seeing that a lot more prevalent from so those clients. I want to explore this a little bit, because I saw a stat, uh, I, some IDC survey said that 80% of companies say that half their workloads are going to come back on-prem by, I don't, know, I don't know when, but anyway, that repatriation conversation. So okay, so the insurance company, their claims app ain't going into the cloud. Yep. But, if, if I'm the CIO and you're going to bring back workloads. I want that experience to be very cloud-like, I want the tool chains to be similar. So obviously some of the announcements here today, but that's non-trivial. So I presume that's where you guys come in. That's you, right. know, you, guys, you guys do well with complex. So how do you help customers create that cloud experience that can substantially mimic the public cloud on-prem? On yeah, and I'll, uh, so very much we first take a look at the operating model, right? If, if the, um, in the way that they've adopted cloud, most of the clients have been kind of a workload by workload, and you start having these siloed environments of, of operations. But what they want is the premise of you know, how you operate cloud you know, for the way that you do the rest of your legacy applications for IT. So the evolution has been is they want to take a look at this um, holistically across all of their enterprise portfolio, but not just from a technology enablement, organization change. You know, can you bring in the right talent? Right. Uh, can you retain the right talent? You know, it, and is this that kind of environment where you can enable them to go create you know, those things that might provide a, a, bit, a bigger ROI to market, as well as automate relentlessly where you can in, in how you approach services. So I have a thesis I want to test with you guys. So, um, I, and I've been saying a few times this week, that multi-cloud is all, all the hype, but I think it's been a symptom of multi-vendor, shadow IT, line of yeah. business initiatives, and now we sort of have this you know, airline, magazine, you know, mess. And, and I think executives are realizing, wow, we have to get control of this, provide the agility of the cloud, the, the cost structure potentially, but also the corporate edicts of security and compliance. Is that a valid premise? Is that how we got here? Has it been more deliberate than that? And you know, where do you see it going? Yeah, I mean, we've seen some of it even from just M&A, right? Well, you might, be all in with one cloud provider predominantly and you're continuing to move in that direction so you can gain some maturity before you introduce a multi-cloud model. But what happens when you just made an acquisition of something very strategic to your company? Oh crap, they're on there with some other completely different kind of provider and then, but you still have to roll that into how your overall IT governance. So again, these are just areas of the conversation where it's at a completely different level than you know, which console are you going to use to try to manage all and of And that's an it's, it depends whether or not you sort of migrate into the, the acquirer's cloud or you leave it alone, right? Yep. But, but how do you make, how do you help customers make that, those decisions? I mean, you're at the board level, you're dealing with CIOs, application heads, line of business heads, I mean, you're Deloitte, you get some full yeah, visibility I, in the organization. I think we'll just kind of go back to what I was saying earlier, right? I think having a better view of the application portfolio is what's going to start that process, right? You know, Again, going back to what I said earlier, the, we have clients that have thousands and thousands of applications and, and they, have, they don't have the slightest clue of what's in that portfolio, let alone the attributes that make up those, those applications. Right, so really starting there to understand you know, what's important to them, what are their requirements, uh, understanding that application portfolio a little bit more, right, and, 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 and marrying those with those requirements, that's what's really going to drive a lot of these decision making uh, yeah, points. And, and we have one of our methods of engagement is um, uh, something we start off with in a kind of a shorter sprint model, our cloud value calculator, and really trying to quantify what's that, what's that investment really worth? What, are we, what do we expect back? You know, are you moving it for TCO reasons, or, or is there something more profound that can happen back to the bottom line of the business? And really trying to put it in those type of terms than you know, just a, a technology move. Yeah, because I was thinking, you know, the cost of repatriation has got to be pretty significant. So in terms of looking at and working with, say, the retail customer that right. you mentioned, or the insurance example, Luis, that you mentioned, when you're helping them identify the right strategy and really looking at the business imperatives for doing this quickly, this repatriation, what are some of the business outcomes that, say, this retailer is achieving that makes this repatriation cost expense very much worth it. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's speed, right? You know, I mean, we we talked about cost a lot, but I mean, cost has become less of a factor in decision making. Uh, I, I mean, our clients, regardless of the industry, they're looking for speed to market, right? You know, how do I deliver services? How do I change faster than my my uh, you know than my competitors, right? You know, so it's 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 it really right, right now it's all about speed. How do I do things faster? How, you know, obviously cost is a factor of that, right? But 
you know, beating your competitor out to the to the market. I mean, we always talk about, you know, regardless of what the uh, what the company is, everybody's a technology company, all right? And I and I actually believe that, right? You know, so the faster that you can do things, the faster you can get your products and services to market, that's what's that's what's really driving. And does this decisions. customer, this retail customer, have it? Hey, we're we are two x faster to market now that we've gone through this. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I, I you know I don't I, we can't talk about some of those specifics, but yeah, they, they have definitely seen an uptick in the speed to market to be able to deliver new types of services to help drive business. With this strategic foundation that they Correct. now have with you guys. Yes. Yeah, I'll add, uh, you know, the other thing is regulations are changing worldwide, right? Every day with you know, data sovereignty laws, that's whatever right. it may be. And if your cloud provider is not in that region or doesn't have the same level of services that you have, say, in the U.S., what do you do? Uh, so again, other reasons for kind of having those, those, that repatriated, repatriated model uh, so that you can kind of go wherever you need to go as far as your business expansion. Excellent, guys. I wish we had more time. There's so much to talk about here, but Luis, Bob, thanks so much for Thank stopping you. by theCUBE. Thanks for having us. Chatting with Dave and me. We appreciate it. Have a great rest of your show. Thanks, you Thank too. You, Dave. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks, All right, guys. our pleasure. For Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin, live from Las Vegas. If you thought you heard dogs barking, by the way, you weren't imagining that. We are right next to Michael's Angel Paws, <laughs> one of my favorite parts of this entire event, with about 15,000 people or so. You're watching theCUBE live from day two of our coverage of Dell Technology World 2019. 2019, thanks for watching.